So brand is really a science unto itself. And there are many ways people talk about this. And so I would just simplify it by saying, you have to think about what you want to be as a brand in terms of something as simple as who you are. So are you somebody who drinks Coke or Pepsi? Why? What does that represent to you? Well, that's basically <coughs> an example of the kind of brand that you've got to think about. Do you represent one or the other? In our business, it's probably, are you Dell low cost provision or are you Apple you know, premium best product? And that's really the essence of, of thinking about how brand might come into play in your go to market. The thing I want to share with you as a startup is, it can get complicated if you get this you know, initial set of thoughts about, well, how would I define my brand? But it's simple as, as this to start off with. It's about you. You, the founders, are going to be the brand of your company to start off with. And what you do to engage with your first customers, your first partners, even your, your shareholders, is going to define what your brand is. And how you execute in literally day-to-day -day engagement with those people is going to be what people remember, remember you for. So even if you haven't taken time to define your brand, it will be defined by those kinds of behaviors. With that, I'd like Adam to give you some sense of how to bring this into more of a scientific approach. Let's talk about brand. Take a moment and think about a brand that you love or a brand that you think is great. And think about what makes it great. Why is that brand so good? All right, who wants to share one of these? Bring it. OK, stand up. Tell us your name, the brand, in one sentence, what makes it great. Uh, really loud. My name is Nazia, and I like Dell. That was my first computer because it was cheap, and I could afford it. Awesome. All right, somebody else. Share, share. Don't be shy. You're getting graded on this. <laughs> Go for it. I cheated. I saw the sign Coca-Cola. I thought of consistency. Uh-huh. It's like you're ready to go. It's the same, the same product. Great. And your name? Sergio. Sergio. All right, one more. Bring it. Go for it. Fadi. My name is Fadi. And the uh, brand I like is Moleskine. They make great... Uh, like notebooks and uh, pens. Uh, what I like about the brand is the perfectionism in every detail about the quality, even the size of the paper. And, like, awesome. Detail. That's good. Yeah. We got it. We got it. We got to go fast. So, uh, so brand, brand's an incredibly powerful tool. If you have a strong brand, it drives sales, it gets you into customers, it opens up new markets for you, it drives top line revenue, it drives profitability. But what is it? You know, really, what is a brand? N normally, when you think brand, you think immediately of an expression of the brand. So you think about the Nike swoosh, or you think about the iconic grill on the front of a BMW. Maybe you think about the unique service that you can get from a company like Nordstrom, or the sound that you get in a Harley Davidson motorcycle. All of those are really powerful expressions of brand. But they start from something deeper. They start from a core idea, from a concept. I call that a brand essence. It, it sits at the center of a brand. And all those other things that surround it, your name, your logo, the graphics that you use on your website, the voice that you have on the voicemail answering machine, the way your website works to service customers, all, all the ways you touch your customers through your brand, they're fundamentally expressions of that brand essence. And as Michael was saying, that brand essence actually starts with you, the founder, and with the culture of the organization you build around it. If what you're trying to create as a brand is inconsistent with your culture as a company, it will fall apart. It will break as, as you get more and more people in. It won't be consistent. It won't have integrity. People won't remember it. So how do you, how do you define a brand a brand essence. Um, we don't have time for me to go through this all in detail, but I just want to throw out there kind of the core concepts that go into a brand essence. There's basically four pieces that you want to work with. So the first is a vision. Now when I talk about a vision, I don't mean a vision for your product roadmap. What I mean is a vision for how the world is going to change or how the world is changing as a result of your product, or how your product is reacting to that change. So to use Nike as an example, which started all the way back in the 70s, the change that they tackled <laughs> was the, the emergence 
of the amateur athlete and the, and the sort of personal health movement. People wanted to be athletic. So that's the first piece. You have to vision. What is it about the world that you're changing fundamentally? Second thing is you need a promise. In some ways, what a brand really represents is a promise to a consumer or to a customer. To come back to the Nike example, I think Nike's promise is that we will make you and help you perform at your very best. If you wear our shoes, if you wear our gear, you will run as fast as you can, you will jump as high as you can, you will achieve your true potential for performance. So that's your promise. And once you've made that promise, try to keep that everywhere. You try to keep that in every single interaction, every single time. And when you break that promise, um, you pay for it because your customers will know right away. The third component are what are called brand attributes. And again, you can think about these conceptually. So they're ideas that underlie all the different expressions that you might have for your brand. And there's three levels. The first is your spike. Um, sometimes people call this one simple thing. It's a single core idea that unifies everything you do. Uh, for, um, for Zipcar, they call it freedom. I think for Nike, again, it comes back to the idea of performance or technical performance. For Puma, it's probably style. Then there's three or four attributes that make you special. They're the things that differentiate you, the things that separate you from the pack, that make you something unique in terms of what you do. So Cold Fusion, product that I worked on for building web applications, our key special attribute was speed. You could write applications faster with us than anything else. But we tried to get that idea of speed everywhere. Every transaction with us should be fast, should be simple, should be easy to do. And then you have cost of entry. So that depends on the market. You know, if you're selling cars, it's safety. If you're selling uh, uh, database systems, it's scalability and reliability. There are certain things you have to have to get in. The final piece of a brand is its personality. So brand isn't just technical, it's emotional. You form a connection with people on an emotional level. So when I'm thinking about this on a conceptual level, I, li I like to express this in terms of a personality. And it ties back to exactly what Michael said, which is you are the brand in your startup. Steve Jobs was Apple. He was literally a manifestation of Apple. Um, the way he dressed, the simplicity, the focus of it, the way he spoke, the way he presented things and invented things as if they were magical. He was the brand. And that very often happens in companies, especially in their first 30 or 40 years before they become really institutionalized. So one way to think about your brand emotionally is to think about the personality. If your brand was a person, what would it be like? What would their personality be like? Would they be friendly? Would they be aggressive like uh, um, a Larry Ellison? Uh, you know, would they be super creative? Would they be very flexible and easygoing, super casual? So you think about, would they be fun and playful? Think about their personality, and that'll help you think about how to communicate the emotional aspects of your, of your brand. And then finally, think about your brand's style. And again, I like using the metaphor of a person. So what would they wear? How would they look? You know, if you're Chanel, you're super classy. If you're Victoria's Secret, you're kind of sexy. Right? If you're Oracle, it's, uh, you know, your sort of style is very stark. And, uh, and if you're Apple, your style is very elegant. So imagine again a person. What would they wear? How would they look? What would their style be? So brand is this fundamentally powerful thing. Everyone here can immediately think of the brands they connect with. Brand starts with an idea. It starts with a core brand essence. Then you then find different ways to express that idea 360 degrees. Everywhere, everywhere you touch customers. And that brand essence has these sort of four basic components. Thank you very much, Adam. I don't know about you, but every time I hear Adam speak, I want to go buy whatever it is he's selling. And like, I suddenly feel like I should go get a pair of Nike shoes and start running and jumping. Um, but I really connect with the way he's approached that. And there's some things there that I think you can connect back to, hopefully, that we've talked about, like, for example, culture. We talked about how you build culture and company formation. That connects very much to brand. Uh, but just to draw out specifically for tonight, consistency, great brands are consistent. I think somebody already said that when they were talking about Coke. It was the first thing they thought of. They also represent the values that, that your company is all about. And again, we talked about that in company formation. And then ultimately, they're reliable. If, you, if you're going to trust a brand, it should always keep its promise. It should be consistently delivering on what it's, it's, uh, it's offered. <coughs> And I decided it would be obvious to pick this, but fun to go to look it out. 
This is the original Apple marketing philosophy, which, if you can't see it at the back, was January 3rd, 1977 by Mike Markler, who was sort of brought in as the adult supervision in those days when Jobs was kind of getting the company together. And it really didn't ever change, you know, all this time later. Apple still use, uses this word, which by the way, I had to look up, and I think a lot of people probably did, impute, which was this notion that Apple's brand would impute the value of the products, which means represent them immediately. And if you've ever opened up an Apple box, the minute you even touch the box, it starts representing what Apple wants you to feel as its brand. It comes through from the packaging all the way through to the first you know, experience of actually touching the product to switching it on and then using it. And so I'm going to just leave you with one simple startup secret, and that's at the top here. That is, start how you mean to end, because brands are really, really tough to change. So if you're going to start with a brand with a set of values and principles that you really believe in, just like we said this in culture, it's probably going to last for a long, long time, especially if you want it to and you keep it consistent, then it can keep getting reinforced. So start how you mean to end.